Okay, we're in section 30 of the notes, the antiderivatives. We'll go through it. <clears throat> Initially a pretty tricky, but we'll uh, certainly whatever we write down, we're gonna check by taking derivatives. Antiderivatives are going backwards. Going backwards is always difficult. In fact, it is far more difficult than going forward. So taking derivatives, generally speaking, is quite easy. Taking the antiderivative going backwards is generally very difficult, all right? So I'm gonna go through the examples and we'll go through things that you should know at this stage of the game. That is just no derivatives. We'll talk about that one step at a time. Uh, we'll talk about checking the antiderivatives. Again, we'll talk about it one step at a time. And then we need to go to examples. As we go to examples though, my claim about the examples over here, they start easy, they make it difficult. All right, let me give you an example of something difficult. Now, of course, <coughs> typically when we get to difficult, we might say, oh, optional. Well, it's nice to have options and you can read through options. We're not gonna cover the optional questions though, but you may wanna look at those if you're interested. If you're not interested, you're looking to meet the bar that we're setting for you, please, that's a good and important bar to meet. You may not wanna go beyond that at this stage. All right, so I'm gonna go to the whiteboard. I'll go to the whiteboard, we'll talk through the notes, one page at a time, including when we get to the examples, we'll do one example at a time. So let me go to the whiteboard. And I'll read it to you. Again, we, we're, we're also recommend that you read the notes too, by the way. So let's take a look. And as I'm reading through this over here, certainly it would be great if you, before you get to lecture, that you start to read things before coming to lecture. I do want to point out when you when you transfer to another school, uh, I'm gonna make a recommendation, not that everyone follows it, but um, read the textbook before you attend your lectures. Lectures become far more difficult um, at other places. And I mean by that, they, they don't give really examples. What they do is they talk about the material. Now, Jeremy, well, you have a good idea what they're gonna be talking about. Like you say, of course, in let's say differential equations, you know they're gonna talk about that. I would say what's important for you to do is read the textbook before going to class, then listen to what they say in class, and then realize when you go home, you need to restudy the stuff that you just read in the textbook. But the lecture gives you reference for this, all right? Textbooks are far more important though. And what else do you do? Do the practice examples that are in the textbooks. Textbooks are really good to learn from. Now, why lecture then? Lecture is indicating what's important, all right? That's what we're doing, okay? So let's take a look at this over here. I'm reading about antiderivatives now. I see that. It, even, it sounds like even a strange word to me. Anyway, it says working backwards from derivatives can be as maddening as backing up a track to trailer going at 60 miles per hour. It can be. And if you take Calc 2, what you're going to realize is that it's really difficult. It really is. And we got all kinds of techniques for going backwards. I did mention differential equations. And there's another thing going backwards. It even gets more difficult. Machines are really nice for going backwards, by the way. You know, it's like sort of like having that automatic park on your car. Press the button. And there are parallel parks for you. It's nice, though. Don't lose the simple skills in life, though. So here's the problem. You're going to need some patience over here. Some of the patients going to need is notational patients. You're looking at these things saying, I don't even know what they're talking about, but they got this definition over here. And it says a function F, this big F now, is called an antiderivative of F on some interval I, if this is true for all X and I. Again, that might be hard to understand. But I'm looking at this thing, I'm saying this, is, there's going to be this function F, then there's this big function, big F, all they're saying is on some interval, the big F's derivatives would be F of X, all right? I'm basically gonna try to avoid using big F though. Books don't though, they like the big F. And I have the answer, I can't avoid it for long because it's gonna keep popping up over and over and over again, all right? What I'm gonna stick with the more familiar. And what's more familiar to me, the concept of a function and its derivative. The concept of its function and derivative. So I'm gonna maybe rewrite the definition a little differently for you, right? A function f is called the antiderivative of f prime on the interval i if this holds. This makes pure sense to me now. And why is that? We've been doing this all along, right? Here's an example. What did they give me? They give me a function and they say to you, 
do you know what the function, that's a derivative by the way, do you know what the function is that differentiate to that? Well, I hope you do, because it's pretty easy to do. So f of x, well, whatever we write down, we're gonna check it. Well, what differentiate to three x squared? I would say x cubed. I know derivative really well, because the derivative of x cubed would be three x squared. Now, what would the next one be? What differentiates to two x? I'm gonna say x squared, because if you differentiate x squared, you would get two x. Then what differentiates to minus three? I'm gonna say minus three x would differentiate to minus three. And here comes a big problem. There could be a constant. And why is that? All constants differentiate to zero. Now, by the way, I don't know if this is true. What I wanna do is I wanna differentiate it. So I'm gonna put this down, and I'm gonna put the derivative down, and then I'll look at the function. What function are we looking at? This one over here, 3x squared. I got to charge up my battery again. Sometimes I work for a long time and I don't realize that I've been working for, you know, days or something. And then the computer says, hey, you know what? Your battery's going bad. Batteries nowadays seem to last a long time now. All right, I'm sorry, I, I lost track. So 3x squared, uh, let's see, plus 2x minus three, and the derivative of c is zero. Does this give us back this? It sure does. You're gonna see me do this, by the way, even if you think it's simple, I am always going to check my antiderivatives by differentiating them, all right? Always, all right? So let's take a look. Wasn't bad, kind of went through it. And what I'm gonna do is look at another theorem for you. If f, is the antiderivative of f prime on the interval i, then the most general antiderivative of f prime on i is f of x plus c. What we're basically saying is all antiderivatives differ by a constant. That's all we're saying. Where c is an arbitrary constant, by the way. Sometimes we know what it is. Sometimes we have no idea what it is. It always, c always differentiates to zero. Go next page. They got a long list over here. By the way, I hate long lists because someone says, if you don't understand the list, I don't think memorizing is going to help you. But what they do is they put something down like this with columns. Then they write this stuff over here. And they're saying that you can make sense out of this. This is sensible. You can make sense out of this. Sorry about that. That this makes sense. I don't know. Let's see if it does. I'm going to see it. And what am I going to do? I'm going to check and I'm going to make sure that if I differentiate these guys here, if I differentiate this column here with respect to X, I would get this column. Let's see if that is. Okay, let's take a look at this one over here. So let's take a look at the first one. I'm gonna check this one. So how would you differentiate this side over here? Well, I, it would be n plus one times x. And I know differentiation is pretty good, right? I reduced the exponent by one. And the derivative of c is zero, right? Well, I got a problem now. And I'll tell you what the problem is. I wonder, does n plus one cancel? It does if and only if the n does not equal minus one. So do I get this back? I do. This condition needs to be met though. All right, that condition needs to be met. Let's take a look at this one over here. It looks really strange to me, by the way. So I got to write it down. And when I write this down, it, it's going to look strange to you as well. I mean, I'm going to write it down. So I got to differentiate the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c I can write it down. So I know the absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to zero. And I know it equals the opposite of x if x is less than zero. But you know what? I'm talking about the natural log. So if I'm talking about the natural log, I have to erase something here. Now I'll tell you what I need to erase is it could never be equal to zero. So this needs to be erased. So I'm gonna put this one over here. So I'm going to write this down. The natural log of the absolute value of x 
would equal the natural log of x if x is greater than zero, and it would equal the natural log of minus x if x is less than zero. So I got to put this down now. I got to differentiate with respect to x, the natural log of x plus c. Let's see if we can do that. All right, what would you get? Well, the derivative of c is just zero. So I know this just equals d dx natural log absolute value of x. That's all it equals. Then the question is, what's that equal to? Let's write it down. I'm differentiating this guy over here. What would you get? Well, well I'm doing this one, right? So it's going to be one over x if x is greater than zero. What would this one be? It would be one over minus x times minus one if x is less than zero. They're both the same. They're both one over x. So I'm going to say over here, the answer would be one over x provided x is not equal to zero. Let's go back over here, see if that's what they said. And that's what they said. All right. Again, x can't be zero there. Let's do number three. Number three looks pretty easy to do. I'll put this one over here. We're going to differentiate with respect to x, e to the x plus c. That's the antiderivative. What it gives me, e to the x. Check. That one's done. Let's go to the next page. Let's do this one over here. Looks pretty simple. I'm getting a little better at that. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine of x. What's the derivative of c? Zero. Check. It works. Let's do this one. What's the derivative of minus cosine? It's minus a minus sign, which is sine of x plus zero. Check. Ooh, the derivative of tangent. I know that. That's secant squared x, which of c zero. This worked. All right. You may not remember this. It's a while ago. I forget sometimes too. Have to rederive them. But the derivative of secant of x is going to be secant x times tangent x. And derivative of c is going to be zero. Bingo. It works. Again, you may not be able to remember this. You may have to go back and you know some review it. But the derivative of arc sine is one over the root of one minus x squared. The derivative of c is uh, zero. Bingo, that worked. Again, you may not be able to remember these things. And I realize that. What's the derivative of arc tangent? It's one over one plus x squared. The derivative of c is zero. Bingo, that one worked too. All right. So I'm going to point out, you know, we checked those things over there. I did write this down because I realized some students have a hard time taking notes or even looking at me, me writing notes down. We did put this down and we don't write that one down. We already did that, okay? Now, what do we get to? We need to get to examples. Now, I realize what some students are gonna say. Do I need to memorize? Let's go backwards. Do I need to memorize this? I'm gonna say you should have a really good understanding of how to take a derivative. And if you do, these things do not need to be memorized. They need to be understood. What's the understanding? Whatever you write down as an antiderivative, you need to be differentiating it to make sure it works. We will go through examples, but you're not gonna see me memorizing this over here. However, I would not prevent anyone from memorizing anything that they found useful. You may want to do that. That's entirely up to you. Thank you.